So the Greens senators staged a walkout during yesterday's uh, Senate question time in response to Labor's handling of the Israel-Hamas war. Here's Green Senator Maureen Faruqi. I'm going to sit here and watch you pat yourselves on the back for doing nothing. Weasel words are not going to stop war crimes. Today, we bring the people's protest into parliament. Free, free Palestine. Uh, thank you, Senator Fariki. Uh, Minister Farrell, that was a statement, so. Order, order, Senator Hanson. Order. What a pathetic petulant display, Sophie, uh, not just for Maureen Faruqi, but all those Green senators and, and, and the people who are voting for this, have a look at what you're supporting. And uh, What more can you say? I mean, this is disgraceful. Those images have gone around the world. People are wondering what is going on in Australia because that's our parliament. That's not on the streets. That's the parliament. Well, Rita, can I just point out here that this is Maureen Faruqi's modus operandi to pull stunts and also the Greens. And she's been successful in that. As you said, it's now circulated. It's gone viral around the world. But what has it actually achieved? It's made a full Australians look uh, like it's a mockery down yeah, here in looks, our parliament. It looks like our upper house is some sort of a circus. Mm, it um, certainly does. And... Uh, yeah, I think a lot of eyes have been opened. I've had so many messages from members of the Jewish community in the last few days, last three weeks really, uh, about uh, how they feel towards many of the Teals, the Greens, and increasingly also uh, some of them in the Labor Party. I think they're finding out who are their genuine allies and who uh, are not there when it counts. Now, in his latest monologue, comedian, and he is a lefty, lefty comedian Bill Maher strongly supported Israel, pointing out that the left tends to criticise a country that upholds the principles of liberal democracies in a region that's dominated by Islamic fundamentalism. For all the progressives and academics who refer to Israel as an outpost of Western civilization, like it's a bad thing, please note... Western civilization is what gave the world pretty much every goddamn liberal precept that liberals are supposed to adore. <laughs> Individual liberty, scientific inquiry, rule of law, religious freedom, women's rights, human rights, democracy, trial by jury, freedom of speech. Please, somebody stop us before we enlighten again. <laughs> And since one can find all these concepts in today's Israel and virtually nowhere else in the Middle East, if anything, the world would be a better place if it had more Israels. Of course, this message falls on deaf ears to the current crop who reduce everything to being only victims or victimizers. So Israel is lumped in as the toxic fruit of the victimizing West. The irony being that all marginalized people live better today because of Western ideals, not in spite of them. What? Not difficult uh, to agree with with all of that. I mean, he he speaks common sense, uh, a, a trait that's missing from the modern left, but he's still got a bit of it. Yeah, that's right, Rachel. I mean, that, what he was saying was pretty sensible. Um, some people might be surprised what he was saying was so sensible, but um, shouldn't this be applauded? Oh, absolutely, and and. Uh, He's one of the few who who has got the guts to do that because there there be many in his audience who don't like hearing that, but Absolutely. he's happy to say it. Now, I know you like it better. It's Melbourne Cup Day, so Melbourne, public holiday for a horse race. That's how we do things. Uh, look at these odds from Sportsbed. Sportsbet, uh, latest odds on the 2024 US presidential election. Interesting indeed. Donald Trump is now favourite to win at $2.63, while Joe Biden is $2.80. We've got a couple of uh, outsiders there in Gavin Newsom and Nikki Haley. This obviously follows polling that I'll be discussing later in the program with Josh Hammer. But uh, interesting result. Would you be having a punt on that, $2.63? Oh, look, Rita, it's still a while out till this takes place. Don't even place. know who our nominees are going to be. That's right. <laughs> but uh, 
I certainly think Trump's got a, a pretty good chance. But coming up against Joe Biden, he hasn't got much competition if this does play out that way, does he? Well, Joe would disagree with that characterisation, <laughs> Sophie. That's very nasty. Um, <laughs> Now, this story, I had to double check to see if this was actually true because it sounds too crazy, but sadly it is true. And Frank has become the latest figure to be uh, a victim of cancel culture and efforts to be inclusive. A kindergarten in East Germany has decided to change its name from Anne Frank to World Explorer Kindergarten to be more inclusive. This has sparked debate amid the... Israel Hamas conflict. And uh, so, before I get your response, I want to uh, get the commentary of my favourite parody account on Twitter, Titty McGrath, who said, Fantastic to hear that the Anne Frank kindergarten is being renamed to be more diverse and progressive. Which of the following would work best? Queen Latifah Day Centre, Michelle Obama Playgroup. O.J. Simpson, Preschool Wonderland, or River to Sea, World of Adventures. Uh, of course, that account is run by the very droll uh, Andrew Doyle. But how can they do this? How can they try to erase not just history, but to see Anne Frank as not sufficiently inclusive? Well, we're just going to see more and more of this, Rita, where they are actually stamping out history and trying to rewrite it. And I think that's really concerning. Just erase it and move on. And we're going to see more and more of this as we go into this woke world that we live in now. And I think I know why they're making that decision, because there might be certain demographics who are not happy with that name. 